Well, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Well, we have a new release for Dark Table, Dark Table 5. That's fabulous and thank you to all the developers and all the people in the team and around the team have made this possible. This release is all about the user interface. Sorry, no um, new models in the processing. The user, the user interface, the UI, is what has received the most um, effort. It has become more mature, more accessible. I can adapt things to my own needs. Um, so that's great. It's fabulous. Um, Darktable has also made a few steps towards more um, or beginner photographers or people who are new to, um, to Darktable. So that's great news too. Let's go into all the details together. I'm Nicholas and let's go. So let's start with the light table then. And let's talk about the collection, recent collections, collection filters. So that has changed a little bit. It hasn't changed very much. Now we, all we have is collections and collection filters. Um, before, in Darktable 4.8, this is a version of 4.8. Um, well, collection, the recent collections had kind of disappeared, but in the preferences here, you could have um, the hide the history button and show the specific module instead, which was the recently used collections. That's the one here, which is kind of a history and there's no history left uh, in the collection. So that was 4.8 and you could get that back just by um, choosing to hide that. And now we have a history here of, it's the same thing re really, the recently used collections. Um, and now in dark table five, so you'll notice that I still have um, one of the last versions of 4.9 up here, but all the major changes are done. So this should be okay. Um, and I want to get this out um, kind of quickly uh, for those who want to discover dark table five. Uh, now, if you look in the collections preferences, um, there isn't the, um, well, that's gone. You can't have the uh, the recently used collections. So um, all we have here is we actually have the history, which is um, which is there on the, all the time. But what is interesting and important now is that if I right click on the uh, on the space here for the modules, I can have the list of loads of well all the modules that, that are possible, um, like geotagging here, which I have here on the right. I can actually click that and it's gone. Um, so that's interesting because now you can put the modules you like where you like them. And there is the recently used collection, so that is there. So if I want to get it back rather than going in the preferences of the collections, I can get it back through this. So it hasn't disappeared. It's kind of been, uh, it's playing hide and seek a little bit. That's what it is. The second, um, thing that's a new concerns the organization of all the modules not only the not just the recently uh, used collections what you can do is you can right click on the uh, on any space here left or right and you have a menu with a list of all the uh, utility modules that are in use and you can either make them appear or disappear so if I, if I click on geotagging then it appears on the right now, if I want to move that to the left, I can just hold with the left button and move it to the left. Um, I'll move it back again. You can move it up and down any way you like. So that is really nice because you can organize the um, now your uh, view um, in the light table as you like. And in the dark room, it works too. Um, sometimes these, when you click on them to drag, you see that it, uh, it opened. But if I press on Control Shift, before moving it, then it won't open. So that's kind of handy um, if you want to keep things uh, minimal while you are uh, playing around. So um, that's one thing you can do in the dark room. Same thing. If I go into the dark room, I can press here on the right, click here. Now notice I've got the tagging um, I've made it appear. If I want to have the metadata editor, then I've got the metadata editor, which is here. And if I want to move it around, then I can move it up and down. It's the same everywhere. It's really cool. Um, so that is um, 
kind of something that's really pleasant now in your own personal organization of uh, all the space. Obviously, you can't move uh, a utility module to um, your uh, processing modules. That doesn't work. But you can now swap, um, have all the utility modules on the right and all the processing modules on the left. And here, if I go back to the light table, and I do dark room, and down here we have swap the utility uh, and processing modules. Click on that, and when you go into the dark room, hey presto, all the processing modules are on the left. Little light can uh, capture one. Um, not my cup of tea, but I can understand if that's um, something that you want to do. I'll move that back. Processing, dark room here, processing, and I want to unswap. There we are. Okay. Now, a little nugget in dark table five is uh, the improvement of the tooltips over the modules. So, if you're ever wondering what a module does, uh, what it's used for, here we have it. No need to go into the documentation. You have more information here just by hovering over the name and it appears. Now, for those who are relatively new to a um, dark table, sometimes, um, well, people get a bit lost, you see, and a bit put off by some screens which appear like this one um, when you first install dark table. And it says there are no images in this collection and you kind of get this screen, which is it's OK. It tells you what to do. You need to import some things anyway. That is the actual screen you have if there's nothing imported or if your collection is empty. Which I can get back there now. In that's so uh, that's in four point eight, and now in dark table five, if I have an empty collection, then I have a little bit more uh, information on the screen. So, um, well, that's kind of it makes it a little bit more friendly, I suppose. Now let's get this back. Now um, a couple of things that are interesting too. If you want, uh, go to the export module, and um, Let's select an image to export so you can choose, you know, as usual. That, this hasn't changed. It might, I'm in JPEG. What's interesting now is if I go down to style and I have a look at my styles and I have a style called add frame. And if I hover over that, you see that there's a little vignette that appears um, that shows you what it's what it look like. There's with the signature there at the back. And some of them, well, yes, yeah, some of them, I mean, you can see. What's going to happen? Classic Chrome, you see, sharp, well, sharp, and you can't see. So there's a, a little vignette now on the export, um, just to give a little um, visual reminder of what your style does. So that's cute. Um, something that's changed too, which is purely uh, aesthetic, is up here when you are choosing. Um, if you remember how this works, if I want to select only the images with the red filter. And if I click on orange and I get those with the orange or the yellow and red and here this little sign is an intersection. And if I click on that, I get the union, which means I'm going to get all the images that have either red or yellow or both. Now, this worked before on dark table 4.8. It worked exactly the same. So here are the reds. And here are the yellows. So these are red and yellow. And this is the intersect sign, the mathematical intersect sign. And if I click on that, I get the mathematical union sign, which means I either get the ones that are either red or yellow or both. Whereas you see, this here is the Venn diagram. So mathematically, uh, it's the same. It's user friendly. I suppose maybe more people will um, will uh, well understand this little. Uh, icon better. I don't know. Um, I teach math, so um, I, I like both. Now here I've moved to another collection of images and you'll notice there are two icons now for problematic um, pictures. So um, we have the question mark here, which if I click on that to open, it will tell me that you can't load it because it's an unsupported file format. Um, so that is with either corrupted or unknown, unreadable files. And the skull here, which is a new icon too, is for the unavailable images, either because they've been deleted or because 
they've been catalogued on an external hard drive which isn't um, connected. So we get a little bit more information there too. Now I've come to a collection, a small collection of photos I took for the purpose of this video, um, just to show you the camera styles. But before I do that, I uh, wanted to um, give this quick information that there is a new style out for the uh, a global style, a global theme, if you like, which is called the high contrast with or without icons. So if that is something that you might like to use, I use the elegant grey. I don't particularly like the icons. So they were. Anyway, now, the developers of Darktable have um, answered the demands of a lot of users who wanted kind of an automatic style, like, um, like the commercial software do when you load your raw file and it kind of looks um, kind of on the way to processing or process. So... Um, for beginners who've been asking for this, your dream has come true. And here we have it. Sorry, that's a snapshot. This is a JPEG. And this is the raw file with the minimum processing done by Darktable. Now, if I go to the styles, Darktable camera styles, choose my camera, which is a Fujifilm X-H2 series. Click on that and it will apply a style so you can see what's happened. We have exposure, color calibration, color balance, filmic, and some local contrast um, that have been added. And we can compare that, that to the JPEG. Take a snapshot, move back. This is the JPEG. And on the left, so that's the JPEG. And on the left, as we're coming, we have the dark table JPEG style for that camera. So there is some difference that is very noticeable. Um, there isn't any lens correction, for instance, so that is why we're not we're not having pixel on pixel. Um, we can actually just thinking of this, we could go to here and just put on the lens correction, and then we could compare the lens correction between um, the JPEG and dark table. Now we should see something absolutely identical. Well, he's very similar. So it's not quite identical there. Look, we still have a difference between both. Anyway, so this is the processing of dark table. This is the JPEG. I actually prefer the contrasty look of dark table. Hey, that's me. Um, let's have a look at another one. I'll clear that before I get a mess on the screen. Second photo, that's the JPEG. Notice the washed out whites there, washed out pinks. This is the raw file um, as interpreted by Darktable when you load up your photo. Go to Styles, Darktable Camera Styles, X, and this is my camera. And we'll do a snapshot of that, move back to the JPEG and compare. So on the left here, we have the uh, Darktable Camera Style on the right, the JPEG. A lot more detail, better colours. Um, but, um, well, I think you've already understood, understood what I prefer. Anyway, that is uh, maybe useful for beginners who are a bit afraid of processing in dark table. It gives you a starting point. Um, maybe, um, I don't know, if you've got a, a batch of loads of family photos that you just want to um, share and get online and you're not really wanting to keep them for archival uses or anything, then maybe that is a quick way to go through them. If you're a bit more advanced, make your own styles and apply those. And um, I think that might be just as useful. Now, I think the last thing I need to cover is um, something in local uh, processing. So if I get an exposure module here, let's get that live. I'm on the JPEG, but it doesn't really matter. Let's make a drawn path. And there we are. Increase the exposure so you can see what's happening. Can we see what's happening? Yes, we can see what's happening. Now, what's happening now, what's the new thing? So this is absolutely revolutionary, is that when you actually go to one of the nodes of your drawn path, you can or can't see that. Let's go to this one in a dark spot. You can or can't see that there is actually here two handles. Yes, 
to handle. Okay, bit of a laugh, but it can be useful if you want to. If one is difficult to find, get the other one. They didn't used to be two handles. They only used to be one. In 4.8, there's one handle, and now we have two. They both do exactly the same thing. But hey, that's kind of the UI uh, improvements we've been getting in this uh, in this uh, number five, Dark Table 5 uh, issue. So uh, there we are. I think that's done it for Dark Table 5. All in all, quite a lot of details. Um, some things that look small, but were actually very, very useful. So I'd like to finish by saying thank you, a big thank you to all the developers who have put so much work into this release as they have into the previous ones. So, um, well, for us users who have Darktable as their main and even only raw developer, um, well, I hope that you will um, keep going for years to come and uh, offer us this quality of work. Truly, I, I believe that this is the best raw processor out there. So thanks a lot for that. And for all the um, all the viewers out there on YouTube, um, well, it's a pleasure to speak to you all. Um, enjoy your end of year Christmas and New Year, and I'll see you all soon. Sure are then.